Here's a big point, a big uh, important point in the saga of differential forms. We're getting to the generalized version of Stokes' theorem. Uh, Stokes, the form version of Stokes' theorem is going to combine all of the big integral theorems of vector calculus and generalize them uh, to arbitrary dimensions and also provide us a uniform and very cool way to prove all of them. And first of all, just a little bit of notation. We've talked about, uh, quite a while ago, we talked about how the integral of a vector field is really morally the integral of a one form. Well, here's the notation that actually lets us say that very officially. We use the tilde notation to turn a vector field into a one form. The integral of that is exactly what we've always been doing with integrals of vector fields. If you turn that, that vector field into a two form and integrate it over a surface, that's the flux integral of that vector field. Notice I'm only using a single integral uh, symbol here, and even with a three form, if I take f, a function, and I use this abbreviation dv is dx, y, dy, y, dc to create a three form, I'm still only going to use one integral sign. And we've traditionally used three integral signs for that. Um, but the point of forms is that all these guys are supposed to be basically the same idea, just with different degrees of forms. And from now on, we're just going to use single integrals to denote the form integrals. So here's the official translations, and that'll help us um, translate what we know already about vector calculus theorems into differential forms. Then we'll go back and actually reprove uh, Stokes from scratch all at once in all dimensions. But it's nice to actually just capitalize on what we already know. So for example, the, f the very first example we had of the, a generalization of the fundamental theorem to two or three dimensions was the FTC for line integrals. If C is a, a nice, I'm not going to be technical about that, a nice oriented curve from P to Q, um, then we have the integral of the gradient is a certain combination of the values of the f at the endpoints. And it's a very particular combination. If f goes from p to q, then what we can say is we'll define the boundaries, the endpoints, boundary is a good word for that, to be the point q with a plus sign and the point p with a minus sign. So we call it q minus p, a formal linear combination of these two points. And we just say that f sort of evaluated at q minus p is just f of q minus f of p. And in fact, to be a little more um, fancy, we're actually going to call that the integral of the function, which after all is a zero form, over the boundary of C, which after all is a zero dimensional set. And we're just going to define it to be, take these values with the appropriate signs. Okay, so now we can just write this down. Um, this is what we know, we just changed notation here. It's the integral over the boundary of C of F, the zero form. We know from the FTC for line integrals in our usual course that that's the integral of the gradient, but the integral of a vector field, we were just talking about how that's really the integral of the one form that's the tilde version of the vector field. Okay, so that's integral of the tilde version of, del of the gradient. But we know that the tilde translation just turns the gradient into D. And so what do we get? We get that the integral of DF over the whole object is the integral of f over the boundary. That's going to be our prototype for the uh, the other versions of this theorem. Okay, So that's um, the answer to this question. I already had it up here because I had done a previous version of this video. Okay, so the that's going to be the strategy for the rest of these, uh, these problems. Take an existing vector calculus theorem like Green's theorem, classical Stokes theorem, divergence theorem, convert all the notation into forms and see that we're going to get a very uniform answer. But I'm going to save that for um, a further video.